you saying? That sounds 100. We serve a mighty God, awesome yeah. God. Yeah. He is worthy yeah. to be praised. Worthy. Let's lift him up this morning. We just thank you, Lord, for everything you've done, Lord. Let's praise him. Psalms 100. When you have it, would you please stand? That sounds 100. When you have it, would you please stand? We start at verse one. We will be responsible. Starting at verse one. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all these saints. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter to, into his thanksgiving, and enter to his course with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures through all generations. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, as we come to you now, we just ask that you lift us up, Lord. Bless us as we go through the service, Lord, and hold us, Lord, as we praise your holy name. You've been good to us all week, Lord. You continue to be good to us, Lord, and we thank you for that, Lord. We just ask that you look after the ones on the way, the ones that are here. Lift us up, Lord, as we lift you up again. We ask these blessings in the perfect and precious name. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. Amen. Savior. Blessed Savior, he's worthy, he's worthy yeah. to be praised. From the rising of, from the rising of the sun, to the going down, to the going down of the sun. He's worthy, yeah. he's worthy. Yeah. 
praise him. Praise him. Praise him in the morning. Praise him. Praise him in the new day. Praise him. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. 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 Oh, my Jesus. Let's just say that. Let's just say
Mighty God, we serve. 
Jesus in me, love the Jesus in you. The Jesus in me, love the Jesus in you. So is it. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Hold me in your arms, you are my shelter from the storm. When all my friends are gone, you are right there. I never 
to say that I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. Yes, I worship in the morning. Just want to tell you. Jesus, I worship and adore you, just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. Church, say amen. Amen. We come this time in our service where it's time for us to boldly approach the throne of grace. So some of us have been carrying around some stuff all week long, and that stuff was not designed for you to carry. It's time for you to place it at the foot of the cross. Jesus said in his word, if you take up my yoke, it is easy. It is light. I need some light stuff in my life, and I'm pretty sure you do too. So go ahead. For those who want to approach the altar, you can do so at this time. If you're in your seats, go ahead and stand to your feet. Because those who come boldly, they'll find grace, and they'll find mercy. Grace is unmerited favor. Mercy is that I got something that I didn't necessarily earn. He gave it to me because he loves me. I'm glad we serve a God who loves to hear from us. I'm glad that he allows us to interact with him through prayer because prayer changes things. He's there to listen. He's there to guide. Let us pray.
Eternal Lord, our Father, we just thank you. We come as humbly as we know how. We come recognizing that you have all power in your hand. God, we come recognizing that the stars do not shine without you. We know that the moon and the sun, they don't rise unless you say so. The fact that you command the winds and the waves lets us all know how powerful you are. And God, here is the thing that we love the most, is that your power resides in us. And because it resides in us, then we can come boldly to your throne to get connected to you. We can come to your throne seeking some mercy. We come to your throne because we need you, and we need you right now. God, we're thankful for those who pray for us, but God, we just want to pray for ourselves because it's not my mother, not my father, but it's me, oh Lord, that stands in the need of prayer. God, we come broken, some of us. We come with our body needing to be healed. We come with just troubles in our lives. We come recognizing that, God, if it had not been for you on our side, where would we be? So, God, we come because we throw it at your throne at your cross because we need you. We need you to be able to move and to guide and to be able to instruct our lives. We come just recognizing, God, that you can do all things but fail. Thank you, Master, for all that you are. Thank you for those times when we couldn't make it ourselves and you're the one that carried us through. Thank you for the times that we didn't know what to do, but then you made a light and shined a pathway for us to walk down. Thank you for the times where our faith may have been shaken, but you became and remained faithful to us and that you bless us beyond measure. Thank you, Lord, for just being who you are. Now, Lord, we just bring this prayer list to you. God, you know all the names, you know all the situations, you know all the circumstances, and God, here I know the most is that you already know what the result's going to be. So God, we thank you in advance for healing. We thank you in advance for compassion. We thank you in advance for making ways. We thank you in advance for being there to comfort us and guide us. God, just God, thank you for the fact that we allowed to have a platform for you to show up and show out in our lives. So God, we just magnify by your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We praise you in advance for what you already have in store to do. Help us that when we leave this place, that we leave it at the foot of the cross. Whatever it is, if it's financial burdens, I leave it at the foot of the cross. If it's like a health issues, I leave it at the foot of the cross. If it's family drama and all that drama with my mama, God, I leave it at the foot of the cross because I know that you're easy. You're light and God thank you for blessing us in such a special way it is in Jesus name we pray amen his burden is easy his yoke is light blessed be the name of the Lord comes that time of our service where it is giving time and I'm excited I'm excited about what God has in store I just bless but God has done some blessing in our lives has he not I mean he has given us a whole lot and he only requires just a little bit but if he takes my little bit and your little bit he can do some lot a bit with it and I'm just grateful that God just continues to keep pouring into our lives I just want to direct your attention to the text is second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6 and 7 it says but this I say he which so sparingly shall also weep sparingly and he which so bountifully shall also weep bountifully every man according as the purpose in his heart so let him give 
not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful, a happy, a hilarious, a wonderful giver. Amen. For those who are online with us and you want to pour into this ministry, praise God. You can go to our website, which is trinitymbcmadisonville.com, and click on the word give. Let's pray. Eternal Lord, our Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the gifts that you have poured in this place. God, we lift them up to you. Bless them in a special way. Use them as you see fit. Bless those that had to give and those that had not. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Giving all praises to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is good once again just to be able to mount this pulpit once again and share with you what thus saith the Lord. If you wouldn't mind turning with me to the book of John this morning, John chapter 7. The book of John, New Testament, not to insult, just to help. John chapter 7. We're going to take a look at verses 16 through 18 this morning. John chapter 7, verses 16 through 18. And when you found John chapter 7, verse number 16, go ahead and stand to your feet. John chapter 7, verse number 16 through 18. We're just continuing on with our series. John chapter 7, verse 16 through 18. And in John chapter 7, verse 16, we find these words, read with me. Jesus answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know the, the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory that sent him. The same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Amen. Sermon title for today is It's Time, Part 3. It's time. You can take your seats. It's time, Part 3. It's time for us to find some heat in this place because it's a little chilly. But we did our best. We did our best. So when you start to consider 
the aspect of time, you come to the realization that everything is captured, everything is measured by time. Just look at today. It was time for you to wake up. It was time for you to get dressed. It was time to eat. It was time to get to church. It was all about time. I find it interesting that people want to reverse time. They want to go back to the good old days. Oh, I just don't want to disappoint you, but you can't go backwards. You can only move forward. Anyway, if you did, you got to stop to consider that as time changes, you change too. Your friends change, your spouse change, your kids change. It's impossible to go backwards because even if you did, you went backwards, you find out that your body reminds you of your current age. The things you used to do, you just simply can't do any longer. Your body, you get to the point where you can't sit down because it's uncomfortable. You can't lay down because it hurts too much. You can't stand up, all because you were trying to relive the days when you thought you were LeBron James. But here you just have to remember that God has you in the right place at the right time, in the right season, in order to showcase what he would have you to do. See, time has taught you that even though you are more seasoned now, you have the ability to look back on time to find out that God has never failed you yet. I'm so glad that we serve a God who loves us, who adores us, and wants to be part of us. I'm glad we serve a God who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I'm glad that God, the same God that was there yesterday, is here today and will be forever with us. See, we serve a God who knew you even before you were a twinkling in your parents' eyes. We serve a God who knows every hair that's on your head and has numbered them. He loves you. He desires to have a relationship with you. And because he desires to have a relationship with you, it's time for you to put on your big boy pants, your big girl pants. It's time for you to make a decision that you will make Jesus your choice. For you to realize that he can do some amazing things. See, here's the thing about time time is, is that your yesterday time is starting to get to the point where it far exceeds the amount of time that you have remaining. So now you have a choice to make because you can't move from where God has you at right now to where God would have you to be without doing something that he has in store for you. You can't sit still in order to expect the blessings that God has in store for you that's waiting for you. You got to know that it's it's time to start taking the remaining time that you have left in pleasing God, in trusting God, in leaning on God, being used by God, waiting to do some miraculous things that God has in store for you. You just need to know that it is time. Here's the thing in our text, just a little background for you, because I think it's important to set the context around it. Jesus is debating if he should go to the festival. This is the festival of shelters. It's basically six months after the Passover festival. It commemorates the days that when Israel was wandering around in the wilderness and they lived in shelters. Jesus knew that people wanted to kill him. So Jesus tells his brothers in verse number six of this text that it is not his time yet. His time has not yet come. He encourages his brothers to go ahead and go to the festival without him. And then in the meantime, when the brothers get there, they find out that Jesus is already there. Jesus is already teaching in the synagogue. Jesus is already in the temple gates. He is teaching and they were amazed at his teaching. They asked the 
question in verse number 15, how did he study the letters that he has not seen? See, we know the answer to that question is because in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word put on flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus is the Word which brings us to our text. Number one for your notes is, it's from above. See, in order for you to find out the time that God has in store for you, you got to know that it comes from above. You can be amazed all that you want, but the teaching that Jesus had came from above. You can study the same text over and over again and get nothing out of it, and you ask yourself the question why that is. The answer is, is that it comes from above. It is God who illuminates. It is God that brings understanding. It comes from above. In verse number 16, look what we find. Jesus responds to their curiosity, and he says that my doctrine, my teaching, my message, my word does not come from me. It is not mine. It comes from the one who sent me. You have to understand that Jesus only did what the Father wanted him to do. Jesus only said what the Father wanted him to say. In fact, the Bible says that believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not for myself, but the Father who dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. I and my Father are one. Jesus is connected to the Father. The Father is connected to the Son. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus Christ. There is no division between them. Jesus' doctrine, his teaching, his preaching reflects the exact words of the Father. They come from above. Why would I spend all this time trying to tell you that they come from above? Because let me bring this full circle for you. Let me break it down so you can understand it. Because you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are now in Christ. He is in you, and since Christ is in the Father, and the Father is in the Son, you are now connected to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the words that you own, the words that you say, they're not your own. The words that you hear are not your own. The words that you go around and you think that you know, they are not your own. They come from God the Father. They are received through God the Son. They are illuminated through God the Holy Spirit. It's not yours. It comes from above. It's all right if y'all cold, I'll just preach to myself this morning. The second thing that you need to know is it's conditional. In verse 17, it starts with the word if. If indicates that something is required. It is not given to you. You have to take it. You have to do something. Many of you have been waiting on God to move for him to bless you, to take you away, whatever it is. You're looking for God to, like, take that thing away. You've been praying for a long night. You've been crying at your midnight hour, wondering when God will show up, questioning where he is. He seems quiet. I feel all alone. Have you ever stopped to start, think about just one second? You may be waiting on him, but God may be waiting on you. He's waiting on you to ask. He's waiting on you to move. He's waiting on you to do what he would have in store for you to do. I want to share a little secret with you. God is long-suffering. So if you are waiting on him, you can't outweigh God. He is have much more long-suffering in practice than you have. He can wait so much longer than you can wait. It's conditional. See, look at Jesus in verse number 17. He says, if you really want to know my doctrine, if you really want to understand my teaching, it is from the Father. If you really want to know for sure, then do my will. Everybody see that in 17? 
you have to follow my teachings. You need to use me as the example of how to live your life. I'm waiting on you to move. I'm waiting on you to follow me. I know that you know that you know that you know it is conditional. See, look at here. You want to know what his will is? He says it in his word. He says it is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. You have to decide not only to love anything bigger than what God, you love God. There is no one, there is nothing that will take my eyes and my love and appreciation from God. His will is to love your neighbor like yourself, to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. If you don't like being treated bad, if you don't like being talked about, if you don't like starving, if you don't like being abused, then what makes you think that your neighbor likes doing any of that stuff either? His will is to forgive those who trespass against you. It doesn't matter what they did. It didn't matter what they said. It doesn't matter what they didn't do. You have to forgive them. His will is for you to love your enemy, feed your enemy, me, provide for your enemy, love them that hate you. It's not about you, it's all about him. When you understand his will, when you do his will, you start to understand his teaching just a little bit greater. You start to understand his way just a little bit clearer. You get to understand that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That no one can come to the Father except through me. I just want to stop by to tell you that if you want to know all the fullness of what Christ has in store for you, then do his will. He's waiting on you. It is conditional. He's sitting waiting on you to make a decision to walk forward. He's waiting on you to be able to talk and move and where he wants you to go. It's conditional. He's waiting on you. The third thing I see in this text, though, is it's authentic. Authentic. It's authentic. Look, I like the humility of Jesus that is expressed in verse number 18. See, he doesn't speak to seek glory for himself. He doesn't speak to gain notoriety. He doesn't speak to get accolades. He doesn't speak to get any credit at all. It's just his humility. It's his nature. Look, he's not looking for anything. I love how he removes the spotlight from himself onto who the spotlight should be on. He makes a transition in verse number 18. Look, he says the word but in verse number 18. Look, but is a transition word. It moves from one thing to another thing. See, I thank God for my butt in my life. He has done some amazing things in my life. See, you got to understand that there was a transition that happened in your life too. You, When you start to sing songs that I was once was lost, but now I'm fine. I was blind, but now I see. Jesus had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. I just want to help you out that he saved me. He saved you. I thank God for the transition that is happening in your life. When you start to think about that you may not be what God would have you to be, but you're sure enough better than what you used to be. When you start to think about where you used to be, but now God has you in where you need to be. There's a transition that happens in your life. I just love the fact that he makes this transition in a word called but. But Jesus transitions the focus off of him by saying but he that seeketh his glory that sent him. Jesus wasn't about seeking glory. He was only focused against what the father wanted him to do. See, making sure that he did exactly from the person who sent him to do. He performed the miracles that Father wanted him to do. He gets the glory. He gets the praise. Everything has been directed back to 
the Father. Here's the thing I love best is that Jesus says that the same is true. It's authentic. When you focus on God, it's authentic. When you do what God wants you to do, it's authentic. There's no unrighteousness. There's only glory. It's authentic. It is powerful. It is all about God and what God is doing in and through your life. See, this is what kind of puts my face in my belief in God even more, is that because God before me, I get to sit and look around and say, who can be against me? Because God has some riches with my name on it, I get to look around and say that I'm not worried about what Yahoo over here is saying and what Boo Boo over there is saying. I just want to focus on what God has in store. See, it's not about me. It's all about what God wants to do in and through me. It's not about you. It's about what God wants to do in and through you. You got to know that it's time to stop sucking and jiving with God. You can't expect God to keep blessing your life when you're not living according to what he has in store for you to live. You can't expect God to keep blessing your mess when God wants you to love in a special way. You can't keep asking God over and over again for stuff when you're not willing to love one another as Christ loved the church. I know that this isn't one that you want to jump up and scream and shout about, but here's the thing that I love the most, is that one of these old days that I'm going to be able to see him face to face. And when I see him face to face, I want him to say one thing and one thing only. I want him to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I just want to be able to enter in to glory and see all the magnificent things that he has in store for me. I thank God that he had a transition in my life. See, I should have been dead. I should have been in jail. I should have been underneath the cell. But God made a way out of no way that I just call him. I just thank him that I'm in a situation to understand that it's time for me to stop being me and start being more of him. See, I want God to look in my life and not see me anymore. I want him to see himself. And when he sees himself, then I know that when I get to see him face to face, that I can only say one thing, is that one thing only is I thank God for making a way out of no way. I thank God that I get the opportunity to walk the streets that are made and paid for me. I thank God that he is all that he is. When you start thinking about it, it's time. There's going to be one of these old days that it's time for me to take off this old building and put on a new building and put on a robe that I know that I can be able to sing and shout. Because one of these days we're going to see Jesus face to face and I'm just going to sing. I'm going to shout that I have some victory in my life. I'll just stop by to tell you it's time. May God bless you. The doors of the church are open. Go ahead and stand with me. Perhaps you're here to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. Maybe you're here to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ. Maybe looking for a church home. Maybe just looking for somebody to pray for you. Any one of those four things why don't you come? going to go ahead and bring Mary up. She's going to go through the announcements for us.
Good morning. Pastor Flood, members, officers. Okay. Um, our announcements are as follows. Okay. The 2024 giving envelopes are now available in the church office. Please stop by and pick up your boxes today and know that God loves a cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians 9, chapter 7, five. The next leadership meeting is scheduled for Sunday, January 21st, 2024, immediately following morning worship in the fellowship hall. All leaders, please plan to attend. The next church business meeting will take place on Sunday, January 28th, 2024, immediately following morning worship service in the fellowship hall. All are welcome to attend to get a taste of where the Lord has brought us from and where he's taking us to. Please plan to attend. Attention all ushers. There will be a meeting in the CBT class formerly known as the Ladies' Lounge, in the educational building immediately, today immediately following morning worship. Please note that the weekly announcements are now available on the church website, www.trinitynbcmadisonville.com. Pastor's office hours this week are Tuesday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Please note that weekly announcements and upcoming events are on the bulletin board and in the breezeway out in the front table in the vestibule. Prayer, prayer request forms can be found in the prayer box or you can request one from an usher. And please remember our sick and shut in with calls and cards. Do we have any visitors this morning? Okay, we're all church members. Amen. Okay, I have some thank you cards. If you just give me a minute to get my glasses on. I don't want to take them off. And it's a bad habit. Okay, this thank you comes from Victoria Price, Brent Thompson, Ariel Kennedy, and Jeremiah Kennedy. To the Trinity Missionary Baptist Church, I'd like to say thank you for your gift of food help for 2023 Thanksgiving season. I know that things in our world are hard, and your gift made my holiday season so blessed. I want to let everyone in the church know that me and my children were blessed by your generosity, and we appreciate the food assistance. I will continue to pray for Pastor Flood and his family and all the members of Trinity NBC. Stay safe and strong in Christ. Amen. We have another thank you so much. Pastor Flood and congregation, thank you for all your generosity. Your acts of kindness made this Christmas memorable. We love the gifts. We appreciate you all so much. I don't know if I'm saying these names right, so please forgive me. Zakara, Micaiah, Michaelin, Zakarlia, Matthew, and Sam. Amen. And one more. Thank you. The grandmother will... Oh, 
Euphoria Flood and Trinity in D.C. Thank you so much for being awesome. Thank you for providing gifts for the family that I adopted at Ninth District Elementary. D. Joyce McGee. The grandmother was excited and thankful when I dropped off the gift. Amen. Okay. Now, that was all the announcements. Now, if I could just have you for one more second. I got one more thing for you next. <laughs> As I steal that from Pat. Okay, everyone talks about, we're talking about time, time, everybody has to do something on time, time, you gotta rush here on time, you gotta rush there on time, nobody has time for anything, my question is, what's the rush, there's no time Most of all, what are you thankful for? What, what are you grateful for? The thing you're grateful for, the thing I'm grateful for the most, is God's amazing grace. Because without God's amazing grace, I would not be where I am today. I would Wonderful children. Eight great grandchildren. Your husband, my second husband, I'm glad that God is alive. But God is so awesome and enjoy. I'm gonna do it like the old folks do it.
Y'all got enough of that, huh? I'm grateful for God's amazing grace. So thank you, thank you. Amen, amen. And just want to let you guys know how much I love you. Just uh, pray for us. Anytime it gets within to single digits, it's tough to keep this building warm. So we appreciate you keeping the doors closed as much as possible so that we can try to keep what heat we do have in here, in here. Now, it's going to be cold all week long, so next Sunday when you come, you might want to come with a couple of more layers because then we're going to try to get the temperature up to the 70 at least. Right now it's in the 60s, so you're a little bit, like, uncomfortable, and I apologize about that. But as Tyrone always tells me, let your soul catch on fire. <laughs> so he wants to make sure that your souls catch on fire. So hopefully you enjoyed the worship experience today. Go ahead and stand to your feet. We're going to sing all the way out of here. God, I know the service is a little different, but we're just going to do this because we want God to be magnified. So I want you to like let this song kind of meditate in your heart as you get ready to approach the week because we all need Jesus. We all need him in a special way. just want that to meditate into your spirit. Think about it. God wants you to have peace. But you got to know, he's the one that is the peace. about it. I can't wait till we don't have to cry anymore. May he give you strength to endure till we meet again till we meet again. Let us pray. Eternal Lord, our Father, we just thank you, Lord, for what we've experienced in this place. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that we can't remain where we are in order for take us where you want us to be. Help let that meditate upon our hearts that it is time to serve you, to love you, to lean on you, depend on you. And God, I know that you are able to do some exceedingly and abundantly beyond what we can ever think stuff in our lives. Now may your grace, your love, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit Rest, rule, and abide with us now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let us all say, Amen. Have a blessed week.